morning, everyone, and welcome to the December 5th, 2022 meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair of the board. Um, for those of you joining us this evening, I'd like to note that this meeting is being recorded by ACMI. Um, so I'd like to introduce the other members of the board, starting with Steve Revelak. Um, hello, Steve Revelak. Melissa Tentaculous. Yes. Jean Benson. Present tonight. And, uh, Ken Lau. Hi, you're here. We also have together with us uh, Director of the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker, and Kelly Lineman, the Assistant Director. Great. Uh, so let's go ahead and move right into our first item on our agenda, which is docket number 3728, an open public hearing for 99 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, this is an application for a mixed use development. Um, so it is the addition of a resident, one residential unit to an existing office building within the B2 neighborhood business district. And so what we'll do this evening is I will ask uh, Claire um, on behalf of the Department of Planning and Community Development to identify anything that she'd like to highlight from the memo that the department has written. Then uh, the board uh, will ask you to give a presentation of up to 10 minutes. Um, the board will then ask you any questions. We have any members of the public who would like to um, offer any feedback. We'll give them that opportunity. Then the board will come back and um, deliberate on next steps, whether that is to um, make a decision this evening or potentially to request any additional items for a future date. Okay, great. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Claire. Great, thank you. So this is a project um, at, uh, which is uh, going to be a change in use from commercial to mixed use. Um, as Rachel pointed out, um, uh, conversion of the unfitted attic space to a uh, two bedroom apartment. There will be additional signage uh, that has been proposed for the front of the facade. Um, this is a no net loss of commercial space. Um, the commercial space will remain and be renovated. Um, indeed, it looks like they are planning to construct some additional ADA access to the commercial space. Um, and uh, as the board requested, the applicant has provided additional locations for bicycle parking, as well as the lead um, checklist. Kelly, I don't know if you have anything to add at this point, or if just you want to wait. One additional thing to add is that in the memo, we erroneously said that it's on the uh, local inventory of historically um, and architecturally significant properties. The property that actually is on the inventory is 99 Mass Ave, which sits behind this building. It's not, thank you, Jane. Uh, Gene and I had a discussion this afternoon. So it's actually the building in front of it, this office building, is not on the inventory. So it is not subject to the historical commission review. Great. Thank you for the clarification, Kelly. And thank you, Claire, for the additional information. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to um, turn it over to our applicants. If you could introduce yourselves. Um, and then we'd love to hear you present the, uh, the project. Yes. Uh, hello. Good evening. My name is uh, James Risley from LR Designs, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Here with Bruno um, Rossetti, um, who represents the owner. Um, our proposal is to add uh, another story to this um, structure, which was built about 1969. Um, commercial building, uh, all masonry, bar joists, very, very robust structure. Um, and the, uh, the proposal is. Uh, 1,220 square feet, which includes the, um, the stair hall that's continued from the front stair. Um, it would be a single egress um, space, so it will be a sprinkler building. It, it checks all the box for, for life safety that way. Um, the building currently has a few permits out for um, tenant space. The second floor and the basement are tenant fit outs. And then also some building improvements that are underway are the accessible ramp and the um, replacement of the windows. So we're seeking um, uh, the change of use to, to construct the dwelling unit on top. I don't think we're not seeking any other relief um, other than the, the change of use special permit. So. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over to the members of the board for any uh, questions that you might have the applicant of the applicant, and we'll start with Ken. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> well, sorry. 
generally, I'm supportive of these uh, mixed-use projects, but I do have a couple of uh, uh, questions for you. This is basically a four-story building now, right? Where the residents on the fourth floor. That's correct. Is there an exception for that, for not having an elevator? No. You don't need an elevator to go to the fourth not, floor? Not to the residential unit, no. Okay. I will refer back to uh, ISD to confirm that. Uh, I always thought that uh, with residential, once you go to the fourth story, an elevator is required. Three stories are fine, but on the fourth story, you require an elevator. Hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we've been pushing for uh, uh, four stories is to have elevators so it would be more appropriate for aging in place and give it more diversity for uh, for people to live in, you know, elderly and such, having uh, elevated buildings. Okay, with that said, I'll just table that for now and uh, I'll rely on you and also the building department to say, does this meet the code or not? You did mention one thing that, uh, that helped me out was this is a fully uh, sprinkled building. Yes. So uh, one means of egress from the unit is fine because you are within the 75 feet of travel distance within the unit, right? That's yeah, a very compact building. Very it's fine. Uh, it, it looks that way, yeah. right? <laughs> but, you know, it didn't say anything about sprinklers until you just said it right now. Okay. That was all the... Uh, Physical stuff. I, I, look at, I want to talk a little bit more about the aesthetics of it. Um, right now, it looks like you put a shoebox on top of this building, and it doesn't look balanced to me. Um, and when I look at this, there's a building that was done in the early 70s. I think this was one of Bob Vila's first projects he did in the, uh, the Back Bay. You know, lo those uh, uh, brick uh, row houses right along Beacon Street. There are four, there are like three or four townhouses with just two floors stuck right on top of them with like big boxes right on top of them. I don't know, you know what I'm talking about, near Kenmore Square? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> This is not as bad as that, okay? But it, it linkings to that a little bit, okay? I'm just wondering if you can maybe look at this a little differently and maybe integrate this a little bit more. Like right now, the top floor is, is really uh, portionally larger than the rest, you know? You know, you traditional top, middle, base type. You, you, you kind of, if, when you remove that roof line, are you gonna, are you gonna have to remove the cornice or not? Well, we replaced the cornice, but it's in the same position. Yeah, I was wondering, is there a way of maybe raising a cornice a little bit more and or, or making a cornice line bigger such that it doesn't... Right now, that top floor looks too pronounced. And it, it, if you can just somehow just raise it up higher or make it like, taller, like, if the the cost was at the top of the railing, get rid of the cost of the railing, huh. right? It, it I would make the proportions so much nicer. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and yes, you did come back with some drawings, uh, some renderings later, uh, just to call it front elevation of um, the front elevation there and. Because at first I didn't know what that was, and I said, okay, it's probably metal. I'll give them the benefit. It's gray metal. And it'll look like lead coated copper or something like that. That's on, uh, that might be appropriate with the brick and everything else. But I didn't know until you, until you gave me that sketch. Um, along the front, where you have all the windows there, that looks nice. It gives an, a, a lightness and airiness to it. But then when you turn around and go around to the side, the side elevation, you quickly lose that, and you just have uh, vertical windows there. 
uh, is there any way of adding maybe more windows around the front, you know, the taller windows where the living room area is, where the two verticals are, and just add two more windows so it looks like it's more light, it's light, possible, yeah. light and we airy? Because right now, it, it looks too massive up here right now. We're responding to the use behind the windows, which is a bedroom at the moment. Yeah, I think that, but having all those extra windows in a master bedroom would be really nice. And you're, gonna, you're probably going to have a pretty good view. Uh, investment well worth it, I, I'm, I'm assuming. Okay, But it, you, you got to get, somehow you got to get that clunkiness out of the top. And I, I just feel like it's a little too heavy for me right now. Um, I'll let my rest of my board members opine on what they think, but... Um, uh, that and also, um, what do you, do you have any mechanical equipment that goes on top of there, or are you are you replacing any that was on top of that little uh, witch's walkway there? Um, each of the floors now are served separately with separate through wall units or or mini splits. Mm. So it'll be really mechanical for that unit, and we do have a slight parapet, you know, above the stair and over the roof that would help, uh, you know, disguise the mechanical for that unit. No, you, you're fine there. Okay. On, on the, on the, so what, how are the lower floors heated and air conditioned? They, they basically have package units in, in the spaces. Uh, mini splits, you say? And so where's, where's the condenser? They're, they're on the back and the side of the building right there. Yeah. On the ground, right? Yeah. In the parking lot? Yep. Okay, so that, those are where remain. Okay, so another suggestion is that maybe you can lower the parapet on the roof just to give, you know, to minimize the scale of that a little bit. Yeah. And just put the, the condenser that you're going to put up there down on the, on the ground floor with the rest of those condensers up there on, on, on the back yeah. and then that will give away some that will take some of the height and some of the clunkiness that you have top there because you said you have a slight parapet right yeah so yeah. that might help too you know um, and then there's an existing deck of the attic and the top, top of the current parapet is 24 inches off the floor so um, that's a 42 inch rail so that's kind of made up of the rebalance of the, you know, the, the parapet plus to get to 42. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. No, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not trying to design. I'm just trying to give you just, like a sense of scale yeah. and where, where that floor plate is relative to the top of the parapet. I'm assuming it's the second dash line you got up there, right? Yes. Where you, we showed the setback. Yes. That's the floor, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I, I think I <laughs> took a pretty good guess. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I think I have that. That's it for now. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ken. Jean. Thanks. Um, I agree with my colleague that putting an apartment on top is a worthwhile thing to do. Um, I do have a number of questions, though. So, let me start with the Lee Terrace side. I walked by today, and you've already put the ramp in, but it's not completed at the bottom because there's a step up into the door to go and so it can't be handicapped accessible. I'm wondering um, where the drainage from the handicap ramp is going to go because it looked like to me like there might have been a dry well there but that's going to have to be covered so it's um, even with the door so can we start with that? They did, but they have to redo because we cannot have that step. So they are breaking it, lowering it down, and what we thought and we are discussing with the inspector is to have maybe um, like a metal grill on top so everything goes under that and create maybe a, a pump system that can pump. That water outside. Or into a dry well, or do yeah. you not do yeah, a dry yeah. well? Which is it? A small dry well 
under the, 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 the slab because we don't have a lot of room right. on the no. side. <laughs> right, you don't have any room exactly. on that side. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it did look like something needed to be yeah. done completely. Yeah. We there. have to redo that part and maybe like a metal grill on top. So if his nose, it goes under the grill. So the, the pitch is probably wrong at this point too, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I was trying to um, look at your diagrams and determine the depth of your step back on the Lee Terrace side and the step back on the Mass Avenue side. Can you put those up see. there, please, if you can no. find no, that, that one? Yeah, there. That's one. Yeah, it, so it looked to me like the 7.5 feet goes way beyond the edge of the building and goes up to the edge of my, my interpretation is it's from the property line. No, it's the building line. It's always been the building line, as long as we've interpreted it. That's where I differ from you, uh, Jean. We've always, always argued about that. I believe yes, it's a, a it has been line. interpreted differently by members of the board. Well, I guess it will continue to be interpreted differently <laughs> um, by members of the board, because the whole point of the step back is to have a step back from a blank wall going up. And um, this doesn't really do that when you can have the step back from, you know, the side property line instead. So I'm just saying how I have interpreted and will continue to interpret this. Um, and on the front is the seven and a half feet to the front of the building line, or does it extend property out? Line. It's Same. also the property yeah. line, yeah. and not the building line. Okay. Yes. You should add that to our list. Applied. <laughs> In this project, it's applied consistently from the property line. Okay. Um, parking in back. Um, I couldn't determine when I went and took a look from Lee Terrace where the property for this building ended, and where the property for 99A begins, but when I walked back today, there were seven cars in the parking lot. So can you explain where the property line the is between the two? The existing condition, there are approximately six plus car widths to the property line. And I believe the next space or straddles the property line to 99A. So there may have been a relationship at one time, I'm not clear on, but the whole thing was paved and parked. So the... So you don't know where the property Well, lines? I mean, we do know on paper, and we haven't adjusted it in the field. Um, the, the building was acquired maybe 18 months ago. Yep. As did you have a, a survey done? Yeah. Of the meets and bounds? So you must know where the back property line is, and I would need to understand right. um, where that is. And I'll get to a minute why I think that's important. But if you're going to have tenants parking there, I, I don't want them slopping over into onto somebody else's property. Um, and I couldn't tell. You know, there, there are like white lines on the lot, but it yeah. didn't indicate. And it's basically paved from building to building. It's paved from building to building, yeah. So I, and, uh, so I think that would be helpful to know. The, um, the location of the proposed bicycle parking, if you can pull that up uh, on, yeah. on, in the parking lot. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't clear to me by looking at this whether the cars whether this could be usable if the cars had to park right next to it. So my understanding of where the property line is and figuring out where the parking spaces are is very important to determine if there's enough room 
between the two tandem spaces closest to the building right. and where you're proposing to put well, the bicycle well, storage lockers. This, the survey shows the rear property line and the, this diagram shows the car shifted to the rear property line, the three tandem spaces, and then there's four feet between the bicycle locker and the first space. Those are not the way the lines are on the property no, now. No, this is, this is a proposed it's scheme. Proposed. I understand, yep. I understand. Because the parking will have to be modified to accommodate the bicycle parking, is without a doubt. Okay. And how, how wide are each one of those spaces now, do you know? Or this proposed? These thing? are the Arlington Standard. Um, okay, it would be helpful, I helpful to come back with something that shows us how much each of those are. Um, okay. Um, then the other bicycle parking in front. So you've proposed to put it on that, that little grassy strip with the trees, yes. not taking out the tree, obviously. No, the tree's in the center right, of the Right, in grass. the center. Is that town land? Will you need the town approval? Yes, I believe for that? we would need to seek approval for that. Is it possible to put, so when you redid the, um, the right side ramp, you ended up with, this area over here, is it possible to put there'll bike be, parking? There'll be uh, there? steps, steps down. going down from the street oh, side, will, on to, that that, side? To, that, yeah. to that access point, yeah. So people won't have to walk around right. back and exactly. go down. And we ramp. just don't need it yet because there is a water line there and we have to redo the water line so now it's winter time we have to wait till yeah. April. You have some distance, I didn't measure how much, between the front of the building and the sidewalk. Is it possible to put the bicycle parking there? Um, it's possible. It, it's, it would nibble away at the very meager landscaping we have. Um, and, the, and the bicycle spaces are two feet by six feet, and that strip is maybe, you know, I, I don't know if it even approaches 40, 48. Right. Be, I was just wondering because if the town doesn't want yeah. you to put that there, well, your option is in front or to put it in back, that would be, yep. in back next to the bicycle lockers. So I think it would be helpful yeah. it, to this, figure out this, what that's going to do. This would be our first choice because right. then the racks are visible to the right. building users. Right. Whereas we would have to work our way, we'd have to solve it with signage to get yeah. people to. Yeah, the rule are is if you put it in back, you'd have to have a, a sign in front yeah. that says bicycle parking in back. Right. All right, so as long as there's an understanding that you could have both the bicycle locker and the short-term bicycle right. parking in back. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I noticed that one of the mini split units, one of the condensers is mounted on the back of the building at about the second story height, so they're all not on the ground. Okay. Do you know where you're gonna mount the one for the apartment? on the ground or on the wall and back? Um, I th my, well, my sense is we're going to be reworking that mass uh -huh. after this meeting. <laughs> so um, if, if we can, we would keep it close to the unit. It um, doesn't necessarily have to be on the roof, but it could be hidden on either the balcony or you know, some other space near the unit. Otherwise, yeah. um, I don't think hang hanging it three stories in the air is practical, so they would have to go to the ground. Yeah, I mean, my concern about the ground is you're going to have the bicycle yeah. locker. You may have the other bicycle there. Start, yeah. I'm not sure you have room for those, and you don't want a car to go and hit one of those. So I think that's something to be worked out. Um, on your lead checklist, let me see. I guess just a couple of, of items. Um, for the unit on the fourth floor, um, how is hot water going to be created for it? Um, I mean, we haven't worked out all of those details just yet. That's why, you know, there are a number of items right. that are in the maybe right. column. Right. Because once Bruin and I really dig into this, 
and start selecting all the systems, then we'll, we'll answer that. I would suspect it would be a, you know, an on-demand. It's, it's a very compact unit. The, the laundry, kitchen, and bathrooms are very in very close proximity. So I would do a, maybe a tankless on-demand unit. Or you could, or you could not have to worry about bringing gas to the fourth floor and use an induction stove and um, uh, air source heat pump hot water. So I, I think it's worthwhile you are considering, considering that as opposed to bringing gas. Might save you money, better for the environment. So I think it's worth thinking about that. Um, you also mentioned um, um, wiring for an electric charger for a car. I think it might be better to actually have a level two charger if you can fit one into the parking lot. So I think you should consider that. Um, Gene, when you made that, it's actually a charger or a plug? Sorry, I didn't mean that. Well, a level two charger. So you plug your car in. Okay, so it's not a plug. No, it's a charger. It's, it's actually a charger. Right, that right. Plug. You plug okay. the car in. Yeah. Um, so I guess the other thing that's not here. So I, when I went and looked this afternoon at about 2 o'clock, the sun was across the street on Massachusetts Avenue and um, about at least half of the front facade of the building behind was in shadow because of this building. So, um, and it's going to be a little bit taller, not a lot taller, but a little bit taller. And if you don't bring in the um, The step back to seven feet from the building line, I think you'll be increasing the shadowing on the building. So what I'd really like to see is a shadow study showing the shadows now and showing what the shadows will be with this new arrangement. And I'd just like to point out to my colleagues um, that um, under the Environmental Design Review Standards, we may require modification and massing to um, reduce the effects of shadows on abutting property in an R0, R1, R2 district. So I think the one back is not R2, but some of the other buildings are. So I think a shadow study will be very important so that we can make an informed determination um, about that. Um, last, about what material, getting to what uh, Mr. Lau was talking about, what material is going to be used on the fourth cladding on the fourth? It's a metal standing seam, standing seam metal. So either, either a, a painted aluminum or, if budget allows, could be a lead coated uh, copper. And what will the windows be? The frame? Al aluminum clad. Windows. Yeah, I'll, I'll hear what my colleagues have to say. I'm not overly enthusiastic about the design, but um, I'll hear what my colleagues have to say about that. And um, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa. Um, yeah, so I could you remind me of the current tenants in there? Uh, we have the Centena team office on the second floor. Um, I'm sorry, could you speak a little bit louder? We have some okay. folks who are having uh, trouble hearing you. We have you. an office um, on the second floor, and, um, the Centena property team. And the basement, it's under construction, so we don't have anybody there yet. Okay. And on the first floor, I believe we have a computer. I'd like yeah. yeah, there's three tenants on the on the, on first, the first floor, first floor okay. full floor above grade. Yeah. And they, they've been long-term long tenants. Um, there's a massage, there's a, like a therapy, not massage, but yeah, thera both are therapy. Some kind of therapy. Um, a computer, um, I, I don't know. 
I don't know what they all do. But it's yeah. it's a very quiet <laughs> building. You don't really right. see yeah. what's going on. Yeah. No, I'm, yes. I'm curious um, in terms of you know kind of the commercial that's there. If they're planning to stay, or are they staying through the construction, or are the leases coming due? What should we expect in terms of the commercial side? I mean, they've they've weathered it so far, and their life is going to get a little easier because construction will be you know two stories away from them. I mean, I, and I'm referring to the tenants on the first floor, the three existing tenants, because there's, there's no tenant on the basement. No. And I don't think there was when they purchased the building. And the second floor was also empty. And we yeah. renovated the second floor. It's already done. I see. Mm -hmm. The office is Oh, that's what right you now. said. That was under uh, permitting. Um, well, overall, I support the idea of this building becoming a mixed use and having the residential um, kind of replace the attic level. So um, in terms of design, I guess I kind of will defer to um, my colleagues on some of their ideas and recommendations, but um, I was just curious in terms of the windows in the front. Are they designed to be collapsible? So it's it looks like in the design, in the rendering, that they're collapsible, the front ones? They, they are double hung. They've been replaced with, with double hung, which the rendering is an attempt to catch up to where Bruna's is at with the windows. Um, OK, so these yeah, will we not need open. That to be up to if they're double hung, that's a very different look than this. Is, so is. I think we need to see that. Yeah. So there's been a change to, was there once, were they collapsible? Because it looks, in, in the rendering, it looks like they kind of. Did you see those windows up top with double one? Yep. Oh. You said these were a double hung windows. Oh. Are you referring to. I'm sorry, maybe I'm not being very clear. These windows here. Oh, yeah, so so to the um, far so left is a door, and then, um, to and then yes, folding. Folding, folding. sorry, and I kept so saying those are collapsible. Not double hung. No, okay. no, 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 no. Thank you. I, <laughs> I meant, I meant the, the brick, brick portion of the building, the windows have been uh, in motion as we've been developing this. Oh, I see. So those so have changed to some. Okay. Yeah. So, Folding would probably be the better word for it instead of calling. Only, and only those two, and then the rest are um, what you fixed paid, panels. Fixed or panels. Casement, yes. okay. But the folding then oh, it's open air. So, but in that yeah, there's a balcony out there in, the in front of right. Those. That's how I understand it. Okay. Um, I think that's you know in terms of you know creating more open space and accessibility. I think I like that a lot. Um, I'm wondering a little bit about the signage for that building at the top there. Um, it seems to me, unless it's just the number of the building, it seems a little uh, placed in an unusual area um, because that's their balcony also, so you'd be looking up at yeah, that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it, it's intended to be a building sign. It's either the address or if they choose to name the building. We, we don't have that text at the moment, but I wanted to bring that to your attention rather than you know, come back later. again, you know, and, and maybe we will settle on the text um, in time. Yeah, that might be helpful to give us a sense of what that would be like if it's a long name versus, yeah. you know, three numbers. Um, so, and then the bike parking, I, I, get, I better understand it as well, so that's, I think that's fine with me. Um, and in terms of this unit, I know you know we talk about it with the master plan, like for augmenting the residential unit. Is it for rent or is it for condo ownership or? It would be for rent. It's a for rent unit. Okay. Okay. Um, those are all my questions right now. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Steve. Hi. Good evening. Um, somewhere in the application materials, I recall reading that you'd plan to put in some new stormwater management. Could you describe briefly what I, that is? What I envision is, is 
as we rework the parking area, we'd have to do structures under the parking. There's, there's really no other options. Mm -hmm. Dry wells, is that? Yeah. Okay, so one of them, um, which sort of springing off of that, um, I understand the building is pre-existing non-conforming with respect to landscaped open space, um, but you're adding gross floor area, which will you know, come along with a, a landscaped open space requirement. Given that you've got to do work on the floor or on the parking area anyway, I was wondering if you would consider depaving portion of it. So you would need like a hundred, so you'd need a 112 square feet a parking space, um, assuming eight and a half by 18 is 153 square feet. Um, would you can sit, would you be amenable to going down to five parking spaces? Now we would have to grant a parking reduction and talk about that, but um, you know, that I, I think is a little, is a fairly straightforward set of, set of requirements. Um, anyway, your, your thoughts. Um, well, I think, I mean, obviously everyone loves the convenience of more parking, but I think um, it, it, if it brought us closer to being able to do the project, we certainly would consider it. Okay. And um, another, so another question. In the, for mixed use in this bit district, there's a dual height limit. So to, in order to uh, grant a special permit for a building at the upper height limit, um, we have to make a finding that properties in the adjacent R0, R1, R2, and open space district uh, will not be adversely affected due to existing use or topographic conditions. Um, now, for, for my perspective, and I'm just speaking for myself here, it's really, we're really talking the difference between what the three and a half story and the fourth story. But I was wondering um, if, you know, how would you, how you would make that case? So that the going up, go, the conversion from three and a half to four stories will not adversely affect properties in the adjacent R01 and R2 districts. Um, um, can I interrupt for sure. a second, Steve? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's not in the mixed use district because it's B2. In the mixed type district. You might want to take a look. Okay, I'll give me one second. I'm just going to look at 5319. Oh. There aren't any R2, R1 properties abutting it. So oh. Yeah, right. it's abutted by R3 and B2. Right. All right, well, then that, that's the answer to the question. And Steve, <laughs> mm -hmm. B2, no mix <laughs> Oh, in Mr. Seltzer was wrong on his hand. Oh, interesting. Okay, my, my scratch that last question. My bad. <laughs> I apologize for the deer in the headlights look. Okay, no, no, no. It was uh, no. Checked all the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for I thank you for the correction. I much appreciated. Um, lastly, we or next to last regarding the sign, um, would you consider putting it above the doorway? My yes. the reason I suggest this is I've ridden by, I, I do a lot of bicycle commuting. I've ridden by this building more times than I can possibly remember. It wasn't until looking at this permit application that I realized it had a, um, a hipped roof. Um, and you can't see that from the bicycle lane, so I'm, I'm not sure you'd be able to see a building sign. Yeah. And I think going down a little bit lower would, yeah, would, we, would we give you. We absolutely would consider a, a, a canopy sign. Okay, and finally, um, I just agree with some of the earlier comments. It would be nice to, I think, if the, the upper story blended more with the rest of the building. They, they look a little, maybe a little too distinct, I think. Great, thank you. So I just have um, a couple of comments. I actually like the distinctness <laughs> of the two buildings, but I, I completely agree with my colleague there about playing with the, um, depth of the cornice so that there is more of a transition between the two buildings. So if that's something you could look at, that would be great. I'm having a really hard time with this hexagon window. Oh. I don't know if there's any appetite at all for um, 
sw swapping that out. <laughs> but again, if you're going with, which I like, this very modern juxtaposition with this very traditional brick mm -hmm. facade, is real hard. I'm having a real hard time aesthetically. So I would just ask you to consider it. It's a, a client, uh, client architect um, disconnect. Okay. <laughs> so uh, just, just something I wanted to put out there. Um, it looks like you're also um, modifying the entry portal um, to have some of the aesthetic features of the, the um, sorry, Claire, if you go to the first floor right here, so right now we have kind of a um, traditional cased, wood cased opening, and it looks like you're bringing some of, is it the standing seam that you're bringing into yeah, that area? Yeah, either the standing seam or there was some discussion of maybe flanking the door with uh, channel glass, but I, this is showing the standing seam, so that yeah. material's repeated. Um, what would be interesting to me also is if you played, if you do that, I would ask that you play with the depth and again the the scale of that um, that canopy that's that's above that and whether or not that has any relationship or not with the um, projection I don't know if it's a you know Brie Soleil or you know if it's a flat projection um, at the top between the transom window and the fixed panel windows is if, if that is you know something with some sort of an articulation in between it or again if that's a a flat, um, flat panel, um, but it would it would be good for us to understand a little bit more of what that is and um, to see if there is any relationship of that. And you know, again, if you're going to be looking at the scale of the cornice between the brick building and the um, modern um, addition above, I'd also think about maybe increasing the depth of that. Um, that projection above the the entry, which might then also make a nice, you know, a, a nice base for your for your sign. You know, if that's something you you choose to do. But I think that might be a nice nod to tie to tie those things together, which I think people are are looking to see a little bit. Okay. But I I do like actually the modern, um, you know, the the, the difference in um, in architecture. I I think you know why why mimic what's what's already there when you're clearly adding something new and different. And um, the, uh, I think that was all I had to add at this mm -hmm. time. So uh, any other questions from the board before we open it up for public comment? Yes, Gee, I, I, oh, sorry. Yes, sir, then I'll grab you. I just <laughs> missed one thing about the bicycle locker. It will clearly need to be locked and you'll need to have separate locks for the residents as opposed to the commercial, because the residents need to have yeah, the, the access. Um, I'm trying to think where this one, this one is installed nearby. It's two bikes per locker, it's two lockers, so there's four spaces in total. And then uh, the residence requires the one and a half split. Well, means two, minute. which means yeah. two. Yeah. So they'll, they'll each have their own locking mechanism. Yeah. Okay. And I would encourage the owner to go with the, the phone app lock mm -hmm. rather than a key or a combination lock so it's more flexible to manage. Okay, that was it. Great. Yeah. Oh, I, I just want to follow up on the line I, I talked about reducing the mass up top was uh, the stair tower block you have there it doesn't need to go up to the roof up there. So we can maybe reduce that down and help uh, change the proportions of that. You know, maybe that's not the tall tower that you, you know, you want, but we bring it down a little bit. And then uh, the mass of the building would be that. And then that'd be a little lower, and it would help with the mass and the shadow study and so forth. Um, when I talked about adding the lights on the, is that side, the, side, the side road the there? You said there was a bedroom? Uh, I, I, I got a little confused. I was only meant at the living area. So if you look at that side elevation there, the two windows there with, without the cornice above it is the bedroom. I'm just asking to add more lights where the three are. The, That's the living room. You mean just in general, or because they are that they are that stacked, um, you know, with the, the large 
window at normal height and then a transom. So there's three of those through the space. Well, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just saying, I always say, ask you to look at, the, see how well, that's all solid glass all the way across. If you turn the corner around, it's just those three, just those three lights that have the transom above it, make that all solid glass all the way around. You still leave the two windows in the back the way it is, but it, it just gives that whole penthouse kind of yeah, look I, to that unit up there. I'm getting it. You're, you're suggesting horizontally increasing the number of lights. Correct. Okay. But that's my opinion. I know my other opinion. <laughs> my other board member she, she kind of likes the way it looks in there because the separation and, and it carries the lines <laughs> through. I understand that too, but it's too, it's, you know, it's your project. I think there's two ways of looking at it. You know, the whole thing is we want to make this look more uh, cohesive with the project, and, and if I can bring it down some more, it'd be, it'd be much appreciative. Okay, and that's the main point. Okay, how you go, it won't make a decision. It, it won't affect my decision. You know, if you add windows there, you don't add windows there. That's your certainly your choice. Any other um, questions? Great. So at this time, uh, we'd like to open um, this up for public comment. Any member of the public wishing to speak on this docket, please raise your hand. Right. You could introduce yourself first. Right. Oh, if you could come up to the front, yes, so that so the microphone know. could pick you up, that would be fantastic. And um, if you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself, first, last name, sure. and address. Sure. James Lane, um, 58 Oxford, soon to be 15 Melrose. I actually like the project. That's really nice. Uh, I'm a little the setback. The setback at the fourth story. Can you explain that requirement and how theirs doesn't meet it exactly? Uh, is that your only question, or do you have other items I, that you? I I, I, I do. Um, they're adding a single residential unit. There's limited upside to the product. This seems like an awful lot of process to go through for a single residential unit frankly unnecessary. And most of the discussion seems to be about aesthetics and personal choices. That seems like it could be accomplished with an email to them outside of this process where the rest of us don't listen, they don't have to sit here for as long, it takes less time. Um, and things that frankly seem unnecessary like the heating and hot water systems, like there's nothing in the bylaw that says what they can and can't do with their heating systems. Um, that's all I have other than the setback. What was the setback requirement? That uh, we'll get that to that in a second. Are you all Aside from that, that's, that's all set. Right. Okay. So um, one of the charges of this board is to make sure that we um, look at the way that the buildings um, uh, work with the uh, context. And um, that is exactly what we're doing right now. So it's not a discussion. I'm addressing why that's very important for this board. This is not a discussion. No, 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 why I, I, this I, is important <laughs> for this board to no, address, I, I, I um, as well as the other items which are addressed in the lead checklist and, um, again, all part of the environmental design review criteria. Um, with regard to um, step backs, that is the amount of space that is um, uh, required for a building to um, be pulled back um, from uh, Again, it's not defined in the bylaw. Some members of the board um, identify that as the face of the building, some of the lease line. Um, but to uh, at the fourth story, that's required to basically ensure that there is a um, break in the vertical articulation of a uh, of a facade. So, so that uh, we're, we're not going to do a discussion back and no, forth, no. and we'd be happy to. Um, we're not going to interrupt their hearing oh, for that, okay, okay, sure. but um, we'd be more than happy to answer questions <laughs> for you, James, um, okay, after after the hearing. Um, all right. Any other public comment? Please, if you could introduce yourself again, sure. first, last name, and um, address. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Chris Loretti, 56 Adam Street, a former member of the Redevelopment Board. I'm actually a bit perplexed by the applicant saying the only relief they were seeking is for the special permit itself. Um, if you look at the minimum frontage for this lot for use as um, mixed use, it's 50 feet. They only have 40. 
they are not meeting the usable open space requirement, or at least are not showing that they are um, in any of these material they submitted. I'm, I'm not sure that they're not, but they're saying they're not. And they're also saying they're not meeting the landscape open space requirement, and, and they need to meet both of those. And I would turn your attention to another B2 property that's at 199 Broadway, back when the town observed its zoning bylaw. The building inspector required the usable open space and the landscape open space to be met, and it was. And I think you need to do that again. I did not see that the board acknowledged the correspondence from Mr. Seltzer, so I'd like to mention a couple things from that. Uh, and in case you didn't receive it, I'm happy to give you a copy. Oh, you got it. Great. Um, just a couple things. The, um, uh, well, in the upper story setback, I think you need to clarify the language in the zoning bylaw so there's no disagreement about what that means. Um, in terms of the height buffer uh, zone, I believe it's dependent on the distance the residential properties are from the development, not whether they abut it or not. But the issue here is the town screwed up when they did the recodification, and they claimed that they were not making any substantive changes to the bylaw. If you look at the bylaw immediately before the recodification, this indeed was a property that qualified for the height, height buffer um, treatment. And they did this thing with the 20,000 square feet that was never in the bylaw prior to the recodification. And that's something else that needs to be looked at again and I believe corrected. Um, frankly, you could probably meet the usable open space requirement on the roof and that would comply with the bylaw in this case if the roof is less than 10 feet high, assuming it meets the, the um, 25 you know, foot minimum dimension. And I would suggest you require that, and I would suggest you also require the um, <coughs> landscaped open space on the ground level. So I think that's about it. Mr. Seltzer also mentioned some issues related to handicapped accessibility. I'll help take those also. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? Is there anyone else? to speak this evening so at this point we will uh, close public comment and uh, turn it back over to the board um, it sounds to me like there are several um, items which we would like the applicant to address and then um, come, come back in front of us before we're able to make a decision on this um, I wanted to see if there was any further discussion before I run through the list that I was keeping here please Steve uh, so one regarding the upper story step backs yes uh, on the least terrace side, we're yes. speaking about the lead terrace side specifically, um, the section that requires upper story step backs, 5317, exempts alleys. And, you know, we don't define alley in our bylaw. We defer to a dictionary definition. Uh, staff was nice enough, was gracious enough to dig it up for me. And so, you know, the definitions from Webster's on a bridge dictionary are a passage as through a continuous row of houses permitting access from the street to backyards, garages, etc. cetera. Uh, definition number two is a narrow back street and a walk is in a garden enclosed with hedges or, sh or shrubbery. Now, given that this, I measured the width of Lee Terrace this weekend and it's 13 feet, four inches wide at the mouth of Mass Ave, um, which is, far narrower than our subdivision control laws will allow a street to be. Um, I also walk the distance of Lee Terrace and it feels like an alley. So I'm, I question whether they need a step back on that side at all. I think it's abutting an alley. That's a good point. Uh, any other point of view on uh, either in um, favor of Steve's interpretation or with a different point of view? Yeah, I don't think it's an alley because there are houses in back. You can mm -hmm. only access those houses. I also walk mm -hmm. down the mm -hmm. terrace. You can only access those houses by going down it. It's not just behind a row of houses. You know, the traditional alley is going to be, you know, between backyards, something like that. And I think the intention was to make it streets where step backs are required. We're going to discuss later whether the step back rules really make any sense, mm -hmm. but they're in the bylaws right now. So I, I don't believe it would qualify as, an alley, as a street because 
the town designates it a street. Narrow and short as it may be. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not here to debate this is an alley or a street. That's uh, really unfair to the client here. I think I just want to say you heard a bunch of our comments, and I'm willing to motion to, uh, uh, to uh, extend this for another uh, hearing. And Why don't I run through then yes. a list of, of items? Did you have well, something I, else before I, we do? So I'm not going to be able to vote for this because of the setbacks. I just want to be clear. So if anyone else here agrees with me, then we shouldn't send them away to do Fair a point. lot of other work if it's unnecessary. Now, I want to talk about the one other time I remember when we dealt with stepbacks and only, I think, three members of the board were on at that time, and it was the building. I've forgotten the number on Mass Ave. Correct. Um, hotel. No, no, no not it the was, hotel. It was the one that's being built across from the high school. Right, almost across. The 82 to 890. Thank you. Almost across from the high school. And my recollection of the decision then was not that the step backs were from the public right of way, but the step backs were from the edge of the building. And I voted no because I didn't think they met the step back requirements, but they got their permit anyhow. But my recollection of the discussion was that there were two reasons why the other four people voted in favor. One was they pulled the entire building back more than seven feet, which they didn't have to do, so that they basically made up the step back by pulling the entire building back. And then one of the members of the board, who's no longer on the board, also didn't want to require the step backs because it would have reduced the number of units and reduced the number of affordable units by one. So that's my understanding of why this board without me um, approved that without a front step back and no side step back at all because they didn't pull it back at all from the side. And I went and looked at the building the other day and there are no step backs on either side. Right, so, so, so that's the same thing that we're saying here right, in right. that it's, it was the lot line where the well, step back that, no that's not what the rationale was the rationale like last it, time it was, was if you Jean. pull it back then we're okay with no, it Jean, well, no, Jean, I, it's the I, same I, thing I, right. I would have to disagree with you there Gina okay because okay. I was I was at I was at then, the then what's then what's the rationale for the the side street where there was no because that was not back. the primary street but it has to be on every street facing side and we had a building. discussion about that and that's okay. that's the decision that was made at that time and again we're not going to debate well, that I'm particular just case I'm just saying that's why I voted no then understood that's why I'm going to vote no so now so this this particular Sorry. the same logic would apply here in that the um, proposed setback is from the lot line not the the building which again is this consistent with the interpretation that others, not you, I understand, made in that particular um, hearing. Uh, are there others who agree with Gene? I mean, I think he makes a good point. So if there are others that believe that the step back should be from the building face and not from the <coughs> lot line, we should let them know because then they will need to decide whether or not they would like to pull that back and continue the project or not because, you know, um, so if there if there is anyone who uh, agrees with that interpretation, we should identify that with the non nonconforming right. lots. Right. Okay. Right. So that Thank they you. don't have to create ones where none are available. Um, but could I ask then, just in the business district, in yes. a scenario like that, would sorry, Melissa, can you just speak up so we oh, can get there? In a scenario like that, with a pre-existing nonconforming. If a payment um, in lieu of was established, would they have to pay? Um, I think that's to be determined. Well, yeah, I mean, I think what, what we looked at as far as payment in lieu of is um, Somerville has a pretty good model for it. Yeah. Whereas if you have if the open space requirement results in less than 8,000 square foot of use of open space, they don't have usable or landscape, it's just open space. It's almost like, well, then it's not meaningful enough to force you to provide it. So maybe instead of that, you could provide 
by 4,000 square feet of open space, and then they have a calculation of how you determine the remaining, the payment in lieu of. Mm -hmm. And so that would be, like the payment would just say like, well, if you, if you can't provide a plaza here on this part of certain landscaping, then you can do a payment instead, and that payment would then go towards whatever you would designate them to go to. Okay, that makes um, sense. And the other thing is that they, have more flexibility in where open space can be gained. Actually, a lot of communities have more flexibility in where open mm -hmm. space can be gained in that you can include it in balconies, you can include it in, uh, in uh, roofs that are higher than 10 feet. Which you're below. suggesting here, yeah, so yeah. 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 Um, and you can, it's, it's included in a whole range of other options instead of just where we are currently on. Yeah, I like that. Um, on the, um, Rear setback, I agree with a couple of provisos. Um, you're suggesting using the Somerville model, but I sort of think some of the numbers are too high if they're like a three, R3 three or more residential district. So I think we might want to um, think about not having the same distance as our numbers go up. Um, the, the other, and um, getting rid of the reduced height buffer and instead adopt a variable, variable rear yard is fine. My only concern with that, and we're going to see it um, in a couple weeks in a slightly different way, is if somebody has solar on their roof mm. and I don't want us to end up with something that allows somebody to block someone else's solar without um, some way to deal with that. And so that's my cons only concern about getting rid of the reduced height buffer area and replacing it with a variable feet instead is what to do um, with solar. So I probably have a slightly different point of view on that yeah. because my point of view is that just because you happen to install solar does not give you air rights to all of the adjoining it, properties. It could if we give them. If I, we, I'm saying it, I don't think it should. I, I'm if, just saying it yeah. could. The, the zoning bylaw that's currently under review by the attorney general also doesn't give air rights of sorts to somebody who already has solar if a building goes in. Right. That has solar on it. I think you know, we talked. building goes in that's higher. Taller. I think we Does talked it? about it last time, we Jane, did. and I made a point of, uh, of saying, hey, you cannot preclude someone else's rights just because you put solar there, because it could be a tool to stop uh, development anywhere around there. It can be solar. Because if you put one panel there or two panels there, say, hey, you're blocking my solar. But people don't do that. They, they don't put up a solar panel at the last minute to stop a development. They've either spent a lot of money to put up solar and they expect a return on their investment and if we and right now right now the bylaw because of the reduced height buffer area at least for people in R1 and R2 they have some level of protection and I don't feel comfortable about taking away that level of protection for somebody who's invested in a solar system unless they're paid off by the person building the other building. But Gene, when they put okay, that- Okay, uh, so people can disagree with me. No, but I just want to say why. If you're going to put a solar panel in, you're going to have to look at it where you placed it, and is that going to cause uh, some future blockage in the future? Because if you put it in, uh, uh, somewhere on your, on your land that Someday, somewhere, if, you're, if your uh, neighbor builds something higher and it blocks it, then you're, you're in the wrong. Just, just as you know, if the guy just blocked it intentionally. Because or your neighbor plants a tree, right? Mm -hmm. And that you, there's no, there's no, um, there's no bylaw that prohibits somebody from planting a, tr a fast-growing tree that can't, that, you know, will eventually have a canopy that also blocks their solar. So I think, you know, again, there's, there's I'm just of, explaining what my totally concern. Totally understand. I just, one other thing I want to mention to support getting rid of the 
residential height buffer in the Arlington Housing Plan 2022, page 67. It says, and likewise, the residential height buffer, which requires lower height limits for land within a certain distance of low density residential areas, should be reconsidered, considering that apartment and business districts are scattered throughout the town. So I think we can cite the housing production plan as um, part of the rationale for getting rid of the height buffers. Great. And that again is on page 67 of the housing production plan. Okay. That's it on those two. Uh, great. Uh, Melissa, any comments on the first two? Um, I guess I'm I'm actually leaning towards the payment in lieu and then for the rear yard setback um, as the recommendation you know these to consider I think um, I don't see the drawback with the variable or the one that Somerville uses the variable Rear yard setback. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you could explain what maybe like something might be adverse yeah. and yeah, under I that. Probably want to study that a little bit. Yeah. More okay. Of what those dimensions should be. Mm -hmm. Just my understanding of what Somerville is doing is saying that because they don't have a residential height buffer, like we right? Do. Our residential height buffer also extends over multiple parcels, so 200 feet will cover four to five. Right. At which point, that, that's a big, it's a big buffer. Yeah. So um, I think what we want to do is that if, if we presented it here as an option, and if that was like something that the board would find intriguing, we could do a little bit more study just to see if what the impact would be of. You know, okay, so it still like needs more yeah, attention. Yeah. So Somerville basically they have you know one setback for one to three stories. So once you get four to five stories, then it's it, it goes from 10 feet to 20 feet or something like that. So. Okay, so maybe a further analysis, I, that's what I would recommend to look at. Great, thank you, Melissa. Steve. Uh, thank you. Um, regarding open space in business districts, I, I think I am pretty much agree with the memo. Uh, eliminating the requirement for usable open space in commercial areas, mm. uh, making landscape based on lot area, and um, removing the restriction that open space be no more than 10 foot above the lowest occupied floor. I think those would be, um, would, would make our lives a lot easier. <laughs> um, as far as the rear setbacks in the business districts, or, or setbacks in the business districts, because our business parcel, our B district parcels are just about all sandwiched up against residential districts, um, you know, I, I think it makes sense to, you know, eliminate the dual height system because there's just not enough room in there for it. It doesn't make sense. Um, so I'd be in favor of removing the height buffer district. And as a bit of trivia, the height buffer, the height buffers, which were introduced in the seventies when we allowed much taller buildings over a period of years, the heights, maximum heights went down, but the height buffer stayed the same. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> We, we got internally consistent over a period of time. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of doing that. I like removing them. I like summer, the um, outline of Somerville's approach where it's, you know, you kind of get it based on height. I, I think that's a good way to go. Great, thank you, Steve. Ken, any other comments? Well, I like the fact that we're having this discussion on the stuff and, and not just coming up to us at the end and say, do you want to approve this or not? Um, in the past, let's say I like this, okay? And I, I, I'd like to add one more is, will the public get a, a chance at this? Absolutely. So this is, this is again, crafting the main motion. There will be a full public hearing okay. process where we will go through um, each article in depth. So um, once we have the text of the actual, so this is for creating the main motion, right? 
This would be to be the opposite. We, Sorry. The Warren article, the Warren article then the main motion will create. That's right. Here's kind of what we're thinking. Okay. And then, yeah, the, the, so after tonight's discussion, I would anticipate that we would draft the Warren article based on what the board wanted to move forward. We would run those by attorney five, and then we could start to put together a package for public engagement for holding some discussions and maybe discussing some alternatives. Um, kind of based on the various foreign articles that we may want to get some community feedback. That'll be January, February, March, and April. Great. Uh, I generally agree with everything you said so far. Um, the only thing that I'm on the fence about right now is the payment. Uh, I not I have, don't have warm feelings about that. I may say let's. I would maybe vote to uh, taking that out. Just uh, be, I'm just worried that we might have these brown out areas here that uh, because people can afford it. And I would say it's just part of doing business. So we just we'll pay into the pool and let them put their uh, open space somewhere else, but we do what we want and you know you don't get the diversity, you don't have the spread as much. That's the only thing I think could be a um, so I don't know. So that's why I'm on the fence about that one there. Um, and as far as the rear setback, yeah, I wholly hardly agree with that. We just said about eliminating that and uh, you know, I, 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 that's all I want to say for now. Great. I'm sorry, I forgot one comment I wanted to make at the beginning of this, and this is with regard, I mean, obviously the usable open space is one thing. With regard to the landscaping, would the board consider um, vertical landscaping elements along with horizontal elements? to meet the requirement. Now, we can certainly, you know, work up some kind of exception or something like that, but I'm just thinking, you know, a small parcel, you know, what about a green wall, potentially on one side, I understand that could be really pricey as well, but it does allow for, you know, more use of the, um, the parcel up to the line, potentially. Um, I like that's that just idea. A thought. Yes. Yeah. I do as well. Yeah, yeah. I would support that. I think it just sounds very interesting. Resounding yes. Good. Great. Great. <coughs> and I think once we, uh, we'll get into number three in a second, but once we get into, after we craft the warrant article language, I think we'll want to talk about what kinds of visuals we'll want to create for this because I think some of these will definitely write that. Okay, great. Um, so let's okay. move on to, I think, uh, number three we were just chatting about. <laughs> Here we go. So this was specifically around um, where we do and do not require them, but uh, we will add to this also from what point we require them. Right. <laughs> Rachel, if I can add, I will Please. note that as I look through um, step back, not step back, Yes. Requirements of yes. Other zoning codes, um, the language just changed. So some communities say from the property line. Some people, some people, some communities like us don't specify, and then other communities specify that the step back is from the lower floor side right. of the structure. So that would be something where it could be where if the board was inclined to say. The step back is only from the principal facade of the structure, but it's from the facade that may be like mm -hmm. more clear and also a little bit more conducive to the personal type of stuff. Can I mm. ask one question? Um, are there others who leave it undefined like we do, which gives the board the option then of giving, of being able to look at, at both? Yeah. You know, potentially so, meeting the intent. I mean, another way, like Watertown has the flexibility where the step-back requirement is an option in the design standards. Mm -hmm. It's not in the zoning. So that would be where, as part of the design standard projects, some of these things could potentially be removed from the zoning, but then be part of overall consideration of the overall design mm -hmm. or aesthetic of a of a proposal. Great, thank you. Um, Cambridge is clear. Cambridge is from the property line. Okay. So um, let's chat through this one. Ken, any thoughts on number three? No, I think um, 
getting clarity on this and have a, a good debate on where this is uh, from and eliminating it in certain areas. Um, so you're in agreement with requiring the molding on the principal facade? Correct. Because right. um, some of those areas are at the corners, at the corner lots. And uh, the, 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 at some areas, I think you, you, you want to have the option to continue that rhythm and not be interrupted by this little V-shape that every time there's a little small street that comes by. It, 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 it may, you may want to create that edge, you know, not the, not the, uh, not, not the valley and walls where it's, 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 you know, where it's dark, but, but you know what I'm saying, that, that, um, where the, where the buildings sort of, uh, flow through the streets, not, I don't know. Melissa's going to say it more elegant than I Okay. I, no. <laughs> I just, I wanted to be into that. I wanted to understand, Ken, so you support it from the facade of the first floor. Is that right? Setbacks? Uh-huh. No, I, I'm beyond that. Setback. No, I'm, I'm supporting it from the, uh, from the property lines, uh, the, the setbacks. Okay. Oh, the step, but what, setbacks, I, what I'm talking about. Setbacks. Yes. Uh, what I'm talking about is where you take that and apply it to both on a corner lot. Oh, okay. Okay, and where we have a major street going through and a, and a minor street going through, that's, as, that's considered a corner lot. Right. Now, then if you have this rhythm going down the major street and you got these little fins going off here, we have these little setbacks. Setbacks. Step backs. Step backs. Step 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 we'll get you there. <laughs> step backs. Okay. Uh, we, we might not want that. And we want, might, might want to continue that rhythm going across there, going across, because it's, that is the district we're, we're developing. I, I wasn't quite sure how to uh, quite say it correctly about, you know, we understand. In, in, in inflecting uh, these canyons of, uh, of dark, uh, dark, uh, dark streets here, that's all. Great. I thought that's what you were mentioning. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Jean, did you have any comments on number three? Yes, I do. First, I. I, I don't have a real strong feeling about whether the step back should be from the building facade or the property line, but I'm not sure the property line is right because what, what about if they have to have a setback from the property line, then is the step back from the setback or is the step back from the property line? Now, not everyone, right? Not every one of them has a setback. Some of them don't, but some of them will, and you need to tell me is the step back from the setback or is the step back from the property? <laughs> it's like, who's on first? I, I, think, I think Gina, we just have to go back to the intent of what, what we're trying to do here. I mean, if we're trying to create a, uh, a lively street here and we're saying there's no, there is no setback on, uh, on Mass Ave on the property line, and then we say, but if it goes up beyond a certain point, then there's a, a, a step back from the property line, fine. But if we have something else that says, okay, uh, it's a step back from the majority of the wall, then we make that adjustment. I mean, and it's yeah. consistent, so it's, it's consistently understood. Yeah, I, I think it should be consistently understood too. I'm just asking for those of you who think it shouldn't be from the building facade, but it should be from the property line or from the setback if let's say the building requires a 10-foot setback from the so you yeah, understand me yeah. right yeah. yeah i do understand yeah. what you're saying in the business districts the only properties outside of the b1 the only properties right. that require a setback, setback. are single family two family duplex three family townhouse apartment buildings Mixed use and other permitted don't, commercial uses do not require right, right here at Setback. Right. So I think it's a matter of the board understanding, like, by having a zero front yard setback versus a 20 front foot front yard setback for apartments, you're already somehow incentivizing commercial and mixed use. Mm -hmm. In which case, the front yard setback is predominantly going to be the facade of the structure. Nobody's going to give up okay, that 20 so, feet. Okay, so nobody cares. All right, so, um, so what's interesting in, in reading the housing production 
the housing plan about this that was approved earlier this year. Um, this is also on page 67. In addition to limiting overall building height, the bylaw requires a building step back 7.5 feet at the fourth story for buildings greater than three stories. While this is appropriate for smaller streets, it could be an unnecessary impediment to the development on larger streets whose widths can comfortably accommodate greater building heights. The town should consider raising the setback to the fifth story rather than the fourth, or eliminating it entirely for parcels along dense streets with large right-of-ways. In other words, what they're suggesting is no step back on Mass Ave, for example, but if you're on the corner of Mass Ave and Small Street, you would have the step back on the small street side where it's more important than a large. So they're suggesting the exact opposite. So if I had to come down on any of this right now, I'm, I'm comfortable with having the step back be from the property line, right, for, I like their idea of putting it on the fifth floor rather than the fourth floor. But I also like the idea of not having it on the main thoroughfare, Mass Ave, because you have a wide thoroughfare, but having it on the side streets where you don't have as much width, where it's more important to have it. So that's their suggestion, which I liked, but I do it from the property line. So that's where I came down on that. And that's also on page 67. Got it. Thank you, Melissa. Um, well, to Jean's point, I guess, with regard to, it's the housing production plan, right, reference? Um, thank you. Um, I don't know if I'm 100% in agreement with that. Um, and the doing the step back at the um, fifth floor and then not looking at it on Mass, on mass Ave. Is that where it says on there? Yeah. Oh, in the large corridors. Um, I, I mean, I think, I like where, you know, the staff recommendation. So um, the step back from the principal facade. I think it makes sense. Great. Steve. Um, so I don't have strong feelings on um, basing the measurement on property line versus setback. Um, I think property line is fine. I would like us to, you know, I would like to see step step backs that apply on one side of a building um you know I, and noting that there is there is a table in the memo showing numerous parcels that have two frontages and some with even three yeah. um oh okay okay um so i do also like the idea of having an exemption for smaller parcels out of curiosity i took um the non-condoed business parcels, the ones that where the assessor's records will ha give you a lot area. Among those, our median business district lot size is about six, is a little over 6,300 square feet. So these are, these are small. They're small. Um, and I, I think we, we really need to allow for that. I agree. Thanks very much. That was a good addition to this. Any other comments on three? Well, just following what Steve said, uh, Melissa, to answer your earlier question about the majority of the facade, I think with the smaller lots there, if you don't set it from the property line, it, 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 it puts a hindrance on getting the upper floors in just because it makes it too small because there's not that much room to go that further back because the properties are so small. You know, the, uh, these parcels along Mass Ave are little dots of little parcels. So I think we have to take advantage of, of it being properly aligned and giving it the maximum. And I think Gene is also hitting it right where allowing it to go up one more floor is, is, is the catalyst to encourage that development as opposed to um, because I think we need enough, I think we need a little bit more because it's not happening now. I mean, if you look at all the empty storefronts and all the stuff, 
and look where we are compared to some of the other cities and towns, we're kind of been left behind. That's just no, no opinion at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. I uh, hear you, Ken. All right. Let's move to number four, height minimums in the business district. This is resp in response to the board's discussion around prohibiting the development of new single-story structures. So, Claire, anything? Right. Clarity? So, the board has discussed, um, and certainly the staff has discussed, um, the maximum height uh, requirements in the business districts. Um, and has certainly in our research and in the conversation here determined that they're just not achievable given the other dimensional um, restrictions. And so staff is recommending here that rather than um, establishing height maximum, we actually establish a minimum building height um, in the business districts of uh, 25 feet, which is first floor um, commercial and then a smaller or could be potentially a smaller 30% or more second floor um, on uh, development uh, in the district. Great. Thank you. Uh, Steve, we'll start with you for any comments on this one. I, I agree with the, I agree with staff, uh, 25 feet, two stories, and a process for exemptions um, where it's in the public interest are just not possible. Okay, Melissa? Same. Not same. Um, <laughs> um, I, I agree about, <laughs> I about, I agree about the need for an exemption, but I also want another exemption. I want the second story to be at least the first story dimension and give us the authority to waive the other dimensional requirements if necessary so that that can be done because, um, I think that's a better way for us to go, then you, I'm sorry, I'm not. So what they're suggesting here is it's a story and at least thirty percent of. I want the yeah, second story to be at least the first story dimension. Okay. And we could waive open space and and setbacks and other things if necessary to allow that to happen. Got it. So okay. I I would flip that around on that part of it. Otherwise, I agree. Um, uh, it's too bad we couldn't come up to three stories, but. I, I just don't, I'm, I also, <laughs> yesterday, because I'm a nerd, um, started calculating the actual rear yard setbacks yeah. for all of our business rentals. Um, Good idea. So I can, <laughs> it, it's, yeah, because, wait, <laughs> you're like rolling around. No, <laughs> no it's okay, it's good. Oh, no, it's because I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't stop, so <laughs> I, uh, but I think, I, I just, um, I am, Right. Let's go with two. Yep. That yeah. Be I, that's so, why I think this is fine. And, and until some of these yeah. other yep. levers are either relaxed mm -hmm. or waived or fine tuned, I would yep. be comfortable with two. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can we waive the two story one or is it? It we, says we can waive it if it's impossible, something like that. But, you know, well, what if someone wants to put a church somewhere? That's a one. That's a one-story building. That's a dollar, yeah. We're not allowed. So we don't. It's administrative. We can't. Right. Say We're, and again, if there's a direct benefit to the community to have a one-story structure, that's that's under the wave. Like a gym, a library. Libraries better be more than one story. Than no, if it's a big cavity, a one big library room. I mean, you know. we don't have to debate all the... I know, the but I'm, I'm just thinking, are we, are we <laughs> going to include some... No, because we have... No, we're giving them an exemption in. Okay. process. You can do a 25-foot story, kid. We'll, 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 it's okay. <laughs> all right, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving on to number five, the Arlington Heights Business District. There's probably a little more discussion on this one. So this basically takes um, the recommendations from the Neighborhood Action Plan um, that was recently done, well, 2019, that feels recent, um, which would um, consolidate the, uh, I think there's four or five business district into one Arlington Heights um, business district. And I believe the board was discussing, looking at this um, almost as a pilot situation yes. um, uh, or a pilot recommendation um, that to then further consolidate other business uses in other business districts in, in Arlington. Okay. 
and we'd be specific to the area under, I think it was the, the map. Was yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Just the B versus not anything else. Right. right. Or E and T. Yes. That's right, B and T. All right, we'll start with Ken. Your thoughts on this one? I've been looking at this for a while. Does sure you live there? <laughs> um, one of the drawbacks, the heights, is the sidewalks and the parking. It's so tight that it doesn't encourage um, lively active streets and businesses and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if we can encourage. Uh, where if we were to say, we can't get the street and the parking and sidewalk any wider. But if we, if we said if you would give public access onto the property, like an arcade or some sort of uh, loge or something, which you, that would increase the sidewalk space in return for height. So you're creating more public amenities where it's, it's much wider. Because right now, you can't walk side by side uh, along uh, I live there too there, no. <laughs> there are trees there there's, there's stuff there I, I think the street sidewalk needs to be wider and that's one of the drawbacks that, that it has there I'm not sure what we can do about it but I just think a way of looking at it one I looked at maybe eliminating some of the park, parking there but then what do you do with the parking then Where's their parking for the uh, for the retail? There isn't any, so you can't get rid of that. And there's barely a bike lane right there right now. It's shared sort of. So there's too much going on there right now, you know. So I was am I in the right spot? Hmm. Get in there. Get in there. Well, that's technically part of it. It's not to the foot of hills. <laughs> yeah, we're Millbrook. Is this is for the right? Yeah. yeah. So if you keep going to the left. Keep going west. west. Yeah, yeah yep. there you go. You get in there. That's it. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's the heart of it. Yes. Yep. So, I don't know. Oh, wow. That, I mean. It's creative. That's a creative suggestion. I'll write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my only concern is those parcels are so shallow. And some of them are, some aren't. And I think that's where you can, I'm you not give saying. Give an option. Yes. Right. I, I don't think you have to have it consistent all the way down, but you have, I think if you, if you have it in certain areas, then that becomes a little nodes of livelihood, you know, or, or activities. Um, Like, you know, outside Dells, they have those picnic tables in the summertime because the streets are a little wider there, but across Mass Ave and up a little bit, they're not. So I agree. I don't know if there's anything that can make that happen, but it's worth taking a look at it. I, I like the concept and most of the staff recommendations. I think we have to remember to incorporate some of the other things we were just talking about like the rear yard things and the step backs and things like that. Um, I only have two questions on the landscaped open space. Hmm. Why only up to 25% on balconies and rooftops? Why not 50%, for example? I'm just so wondering. So what would, what, what if you hadn't eliminated it, what would it have said? So um, the plan recommendation in 2019 right, was 25. Was to allow 25 and, and what are you going to? And what are you going to suggest? I recommend that we actually have the landscape open space be consistent with the A, the Arlington Heights business district, as whatever it, we're proposing for the other. Okay, so we're going to. So it would be consistent across all business. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that yep. thing on the other side of the... Yep. Okay. Um, on usable open space, 
if we're eliminating for multifamily and mixed use, why are we, would we keep it for commercial? The very last box in that chart. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Space, you don't have we'll it for commercial. That. Take a look. If, we'll look at that. Yeah, if if we require it, I'd say we should get rid of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, those are my only comments. I think it's good to do this, and will we just call it like the Arlington Heights Business District without a number? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Um, I support this, um, Arlington Heights Business D District, in aggregating these for the area. Um, I just had a question separate than anything we've really talked about, but in terms of, because of the, probably the open space, it comes to mind about like pervious um, material for asphalt. Do we have that anywhere? Is that something that could be looked at if we're doing this? New zoning district. It I saw it in Halsey or Brookline that they were requiring it in some of their commercial. I think we can take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Pervious surface. You know, it kind of ties into the overall question about open space. It does. Well, that's what I was thinking because generally speaking, that's part of why you're trying to create these usable or open space in general, right? And so I was thinking with the previous project, you know, that six parking lots, opening it up, you know, one parking space, okay, that's an idea, but if we can encourage a redevelopment like that to use kind of a pervious asphalt, which I think that's what I've seen. A, a um, pervious concrete. Pervious. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Maybe just put it, make it a requirement for the entire Arlington yeah. Heights business Yeah, that's district. what I was thinking. Did you say make it in the definition? No, as a requirement in this new business district. Oh. Okay. I'd look to you guys to see what you thought would be best and have the most impact, really. Um, I, I'm very much in favor of most of most of what's in there. I, I but I would agree with um, with Kelly in that um, it, I think it would be nice to keep the open space requirements consistent with item one that we discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to re. I seem to remember something in the regs for the industrial districts about perviousness in parking spaces. I don't know if that would be useful, but it might be something to look at. No, the, 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 the development standards. Yeah. Mm. Right. So my only comments are, um, I think we pulled the recommendations in terms of uses directly from yeah. the plan. I think we need to take a look at that because there are definitely a few that I'd um, there's some residential surface parking and some other things that I think I want us to take a look at. Um, and then Ken and I both were looking at the map and it looks like there is a bite taken out of our business district. I'm assuming that that's for residential, that they're currently You're right there, residential. Perfect. So it's that. See? Is this uh, residential? Oh okay, yeah, see? Then that's probably this, this little bite here. <laughs> It's like a bad overbite, you know, you got it. <laughs> so, yeah, Or is that an underbite? I can't I don't tell. Know. Um, I mean, this just gets to our continued problem on Mass Ave, and by not including them. By not including those, I think we're continuing a nonconformity that none of us want to see continued. So there's no prohibition to those uses which are would become non-conforming by right existing. Um, that's a good point. It might be more challenging in terms of approvals, the approvals process to include those, but I, I think it would be it would be a shame to not include them because it's the same Swiss cheese issue that we have all up and down Mass Ave. 
so I think I would be interested in talking about the pros and cons about including those or not. If Both this, sides. This would require a map yes. change, no matter what. Exactly. So, I think, yeah, as part of the overall study, we could look at what other proposals to change. Great. Rachel, may yes. I ask where the overbite was? Underbite. It's right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So right. it's, uh, for those of us who are joining um, via ACMI on page, what's listed as page four is in the appendices, the Arlington Heights visioning and planning document. It is the area of Mass Ave um, that intersects with Daniel Street that is currently mm -hmm. not included in the business districts. Especially along Mass Ave. Right. That's all. It's specifically along yeah. Mass Ave. Yes. Okay, so that's the only comment that I had. All right, um, let's move to um, number six, which is the industrial uses clarifications. Some of, the, of these are just administrative items, and some of right. them are more specific, more needy discussions, I think. Right, so these are, um, you know, there's nothing new here. These are all items that have been discussed by the board, certainly since, you know, in the few months that I've been here. Um, one is some clarifications in the industrial uh, district, including um, so, uh, limiting uh, the construction of more self-storage facilities by partnering it with either one more principal use or um, excluding it from a, an approved use. Um, there's uh, other uses that have been requested to be included but are not necessarily currently allowed, including um, dog daycare, um, certain types of restaurants including fast food we think that that may um, be impactful on a brewery or another you know, that type of um, business um, going in in the industrial uh, district as well as um, how the new solar bylaw may apply in the industrial district and if we want to um, extend um, the residential uses in the industrial district further than artists live work recommendation I think that's I think that's the background there okay great uh, we'll start with Ken well I want to talk a little bit about the brewery is a separate little thing right now mm -hmm. everybody thinks that we should you know encourage microbreweries and so forth in there and um, I had a talk with uh, uh, the owners of the microbrewery that actually walked from our, from our, uh, from the tango uh, space. Yes, and the reason they had uh, the, the only reason, the major reason they had there was because of the requirement that we have to say you have to eat food here, and it, it's, you can't, it just can't be a, a plain open bar, and that will be a hindrance if we if we uh, if we keep on talking at all. We should put up be a great space for a microbrewery. Well, not everything's cleared for that. So it, it, it's a broader picture, and then we've got to talk to the select board about that when we have our joint meetings and say, A, we either want it or we don't want it. But if we do want it, let's welcome them with both arms, not just one hand be tied behind our back because it's going to happen again. They're going to walk down the line and they're going to say, hey, you know, you don't buy food, you don't drink. That doesn't work. And they say, they say okay, we're going to go to, was it Malden? Medford. 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 Across the river. All right, so we can talk to the select board. I believe, Kelly, that, um, oh my gosh, I can picture her economic development, Alice. Allie, that she Allie was, was, had been working on this. Um, Excellent. And, but I, again, when she left, I don't know where that stands, but we can certainly um, pick that up yeah. with. Um, okay, it'd be good if we yes. do a joint kind of. Our new economic development yeah. coordinator will start on the 19th. Oh, yeah. oh, so I'll bring it up with that person, Great. yes. Right. Um, and then the self-storage. Are we saying we're, we're not going to eliminate it altogether, no more? Or we're going to put a cap on it, what we have existing? Or we're going to allow one more? I think that's, that's for discussion. <coughs> okay. <laughs> No more. I don't want to. No we have two no more people. <laughs> Melissa and I are happy to. No two. Well, here's, here's the issue, right? You have one. By being that prescriptive in the bylaw, 
I don't think that that sets a great precedent for the way that we use the, the bylaw. I think that um, personally, I think we're far too prescriptive in terms of the uses. And in fact, when we build the industrial use district, it was all about create, creating a creative mix of uses. And we're seeing that because we were so prescriptive, there are creative uses that we're not able to accommodate. I think if we look at this instead as much like we're looking on Mass Ave, we think that maximizing the development and the height potential of these buildings is what we want to accomplish and that the uh, mix of the use of these perhaps we are actually being overly prescriptive with is how I would personally like to look at this as opposed to saying today we have enough well that one doesn't get built for whatever reason they haven't pulled permits exactly so that one doesn't get built we just put in the bylaws that there's no more but there actually is capacity and a potential use so we could put I, no more than two self-service self-storage facilities I just think that's so prescriptive yeah I, I, I totally agree and I think what we got to say is it just happens to put it under a special permit and then we can review it and, and determine if there's if there's more room or if there's not more room but i totally agree with you we can't just say no because we're going to limit ourselves to, to, to a lot of things sorry steve anyone i, I was going to say it. i i'm I, I i apologize up front if i ruffle some feathers but i'm really proud about permitting that self-storage facility if it gets <laughs> built it will be the second largest commercial building in the entire town but the larger the largest, incidentally, has an address on Acorn Park Drive. It's in Cambridge. Um, this, it was the biggest commercial development since CVS put a pharmacy by the high school, which I know it is not the most glamorous use, but we are where we are as a result of a lot of history. And, you know, to, to some extent, I, I think we're going to, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with a hand that we've been dealt. That's that's my two cents. Thank you, Steve. I think, um, from my perspective and the work I've done through, you know, economic development. I mean, I think we have to give more consideration to the quality of the commercial building. Again, those are determined if we had the assessor here based on the value and the quality of the building, and. I would venture to say that based on what I've seen, self-storage tends to be the lowest of the commercial value properties. Um, so I don't see, and then I think the intention for this district was to create jobs, bring creativity, um, bring vitality to this industrial area. That's why we talked about live work, we talked about you know, creative uses, and I think we need to use the zoning to guide us in that direction and not see it as like overly prescriptive, but guide us in the actual area that we want to see the type of redevelopment. And I think going forward with self-storage, yes, it is a use that is helpful for people, um, but I don't see it meeting any of the other goals identified for that district. Yeah, I agree with Melissa. I would limit it to two, so one doesn't get built, one more can still show up. So where I voted for the one, I thought it was appropriate. I wouldn't, and I think if it's a special permit, special permit option, we're going to be stuck voting for more of them. So I would limit it to two. Um, so I think with this, we're going to have to talk about how we move forward with this one because we clearly have a significant right. we have a divide, divide board on, this yeah. one, okay? right. on the board. Right. So, um, and it's not based on self storage. I think it's based off of the amount of limitations we want to do and regulations. Correct. Okay? Exactly. I, I don't want to focus on just that. I agree. Okay? So, because because that that is not, and so. I think we take a broader approach and say we're divided on the broader approach. And I, Agreed. And 
let's talk more about the, the table for now and keep on going. Is that okay? Uh, yes. We have, we have, so if you have other comments unrelated to that, I think we mm -hmm. should chat through those because I agree. I think we're going to need to continue talking about this one because, uh, again, you're right. It's, it's a um, question about how prescriptive or not we want to be in the uses. Right. And so the other thing, we just had the discussion about a minimum of uh, two stories in the business district. We need to think about what's the appropriate level okay. for the industrial district. Yep. And added, I'm not sure what it would be, but maybe there's a nerd here who can look at the uh, size <laughs> of the lots and try to figure out <laughs> what that would be. Um, but I think that would be helpful um, to do that in in the industrial district. Um, you know, we tried to get more than artists, workspace residents in the industrial district. And we didn't succeed at town meeting. We didn't actually bring that to town meeting. Well, I... There might have been a well, floor. A, the, the board did not bring that. Well, we, we can have a separate discussion okay. about, about my perception of what happened okay. there. Um, but um, when people thought that was what the bylaw would do, a lot of people at town meeting got very upset and then some people said, oh, that you're misinterpreting it. Let us modify what it is so it's clearly just artist work. I was very well, intrigued I, by I that. Did the, but I did the presentation I know, but and I, I recorded watched. it before town meeting. I know, and but it was, I watched the discussion. It was, it was specific to I me. I watched the discussion. Anyhow, anyhow. Um, but the words came out of my mouth into the recording <laughs> as well, artist work work. Right. Okay, okay. okay. Um, so anyhow, um, I think we should consider, I think we should consider it, but I, I, for me it's not a real priority, priority yep. for the other things that I think we need to do Agreed. in the industrial district because it will be sort of a lightning rod for a lot of things. So if we had to um, prioritize then the industrial di district items, there was a lot of head nodding around adding minimum heights in the way that we are looking at for the B district. Um, the amendments that are clarifications that are required, um, which is a, you know contingent on the attorney general approvals, mm -hmm. and the stormwater retention piece, which we know from our hearings mm -hmm. need to be um, clarified um, the residential piece we could decide to table given everything else we're doing but we will need further discussion at a future date on how prescriptive we would like to make these cases yeah so I mean so let me just say something about the stormwater piece yes. sure. because it remember this is you can build larger if you retain the stormwater on site. So the question is not what's a reasonable amount, but what's a reasonable amount to be retained and treated on site for a site of that size. So I think there's not a one size fits all. And my thought was that each one would have to be reviewed to make a determination of what's the reasonable amount, as opposed to say, 25 year storm event is fine for everybody. Well, I think, so, so I think that would be, a, which one is one I think we would want to discuss with um, DPW. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Are we right. for somebody right. to come to the board and then to mm -hmm. be told they had to like redesign the stormwater mm -hmm. system based on the standard? Well, let's see what they come up. Let's see what they come up with. Yeah. On on the correction to section three point one B. Yeah, I need your help on that. I I just <laughs> wonder. Oh, sorry, the one no. before. 
No, no. Just, yeah, I just wondered whether um, you could talk to Doug and maybe it can just be lopped off because it should never have been there in the first place when the AG said you can't do it. So maybe it should be. never have been put in. No, it should never have been put in. Right, and so maybe I we don't have to go back to town meeting to right. take it out. So just ask Doug, you know, yeah. if, it, if it never had to be there, maybe it should just be deleted without going back to town meeting. There's a reason why we all voted no action on this one, because yes. we all knew it was not yeah. allowable. It was added, though, wasn't it? It was a floor substitute motion. And the substitute know, motion claimed that planning was in favor of it, which right. is really amazing also. Yes. Because the town meeting rules, I did not have that Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if there's that past time. Okay. So that's 3.1B. That's 7. 8 is administrative corrections, which we've all talked about. And 9... Um, Looks like you are still working with the um, with Mike yeah. Champa on uh, the reservoir area. The, the one other question I had, and it's kind of buried on page eight, but it's regarding with the additional changes and the oh. uh, <coughs> with the additional changes that were made to the industrial zoning district um, and and the development standards that have been put into play, whether this board should have jurisdiction over my industrial district parcels entirely. And <coughs> now, this board only has jurisdiction over those parcels if they abut the minimum by uh, um, And so that's, it's kind of buried at the bottom there, but it's um, something to consider. I was just going to ask about that. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. I mean, I mean how most of the parcel, added? most of the parcels do abut, but not all. Not huh? all of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy that only. Yeah, I, I would, I would trade those for the ones like on Belknap where we get to do just because <laughs> yes. they touch the bike path. One hundred percent. Yeah, let's, I think. Let's have a yeah. transfer of the yes. yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right. I mean, we shouldn't do those, but we should do these. So I yeah. think. If yep, we add true. these, Let's maybe we can that get with rid Christian. of. Yeah, get rid yeah. of those. <laughs> Did the town of Arlington ever establish an industrial corporation with the redevelopment authority? I don't know. That I'm aware of. Okay. No. We'll research that. Okay. okay no. Thank you. At least not my time here. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm? Three days mine, so we'll go with Ken. <laughs> But this town's right. been around a few years longer than True, 10. I know, <laughs> a lot longer. <laughs> All right, anything else on the recommendations? Good job. Yeah, yes, really. Thank good you. Job. Really good job. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, what, and Claire, what do you need from us then in terms of crafting the warrant articles um, for review with Doug Hine? So the warrant articles themselves, I think I would recommend that we come up with something, we talk Review it done, again. Yep. we bring it back to this board meeting before we, it's actually filed. Great. So that would um, probably be at our um, January 9th or the yeah. 23rd. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then also, um, Jean, I know that you had mentioned this industrial district in the new soil bylaw, and we have particular comments about that language, just to let Okay, you know. I'll send it. Yeah, maybe we'll okay. wait and see. This month, that should tell us if it's, if it's okay yeah. or not. Great. All right. Um, I, I think it's probably something they haven't seen before, so it's not something they can just say yes or no. Okay. I think we've delayed some more. All right. Let's uh, pause on that conversation <laughs> and move to uh, agenda item number three, which is our open forum. So, James, if you have anything you'd like to uh, share, we um, invite you to introduce yourself first, last name, and address, and you will have up to three minutes. There was something on one of the recommendations. I, maybe I'm just misunderstanding something. The uh, number one, the, there is a bullet which. Huh? 
when I actually look at it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's way easier. Yeah. Um, it is bullet, bullets number one and two. So the first bullet says that any commercial users would have a 10% landscaped open space. The second one is for mixed use and multifamily residential, it would be a 15% requirement. My understanding is that mixed use can be two commercial uses as well. And if that's the, if that's the case, my, my as I understand it, it would be the 15% is intended to be for multi mixed uses with residential components to them. Here. Um, and then I guess my thought is would adding one residential unit automatically bump you up to 15%? Would it be a sliding scale of some sort? If the building owner in their infinite wisdom decides that 10 years down the road they need to change one commercial unit to residential but they can't create any more open space, are they totally screwed? Are they, do they just not have that flexibility? And things like that. Um, yeah, I think that was that. Um, on the uses thing, I don't know if any of you are, follow the Arlington list on Facebook. Um, I not to. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fascinating because there's whenever some new business pops up, like um, there's some donut place going up and another pastry shop and people, on the one hand, people are very excited because they're delicious and if we die by pastry, there's no reason to weep for us. Um, but on the other hand, you have people saying, oh, there's too many pastry shops. Like we, what we really need is this or this or this. And I can see both sides of it, but also the reason they're coming here is because they see that there's people who want to buy what they're selling. That's because they, they see butternut and they think they were really successful. There's obviously a market for whatever these pastries are. Let's go do more of those things. So like the residents, the people who decide whether there's enough of something, if someone new comes in and no one goes to service them, either there's, it's because they're bad, which is always possible, or there really were two, too many of them already, they found out, I mean, we found out this, we used to live in Arlington Heights and a pizza shop opened across from us, they lasted six months and then they were gone. The pizza wasn't good, but also there are five pizza shops in the area. <laughs> so, so like, it, it depends. And I think that if you're too prescriptive, on the one hand, you can crowd out things where there really is demand for those things. But on the other hand, there also has to be genuine demand for the thing you want. So I, I'm kind of with Steve on this. Like, if, if there's demand for, really high value industrial uses or whatever it is that we want, we just need to get out of the way and they'll do it. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Great. Thank you. You brought up a good point uh, with regard to the multifamily component, which mm -hmm. is that we can take a look at. And um, yeah, I think it's also an interesting point about demand, you know, market demand, because no pastry shop is the same, right? They are different niches within the market. Oh, yeah, and the business models are totally that's different. That's what I mean. So um, I think I'm excited to have the new economic development coordinator join because that is part of their job as well is to help new business, potential businesses also identify um, the, the potential within them. Yeah. And Butternut is opening in Belmont Center just I down the street that. from oh, Cape Brada. Wow. Yeah. Amazingly. Yes. So great, great points, James. Thank you. Nice. All right. Um, at this point, we will close open forum. And I will open a uh, new business to see if there are any items. I'll start with Claire or Kelly. Any items of new business? You already heard about the new economic No development items of new business. We've hired a new economic development coordinator who will start on the 19th. Great. We've also um, made an offer to a new CDBG officer um, that she has accepted, so we're working through the paperwork on that. Um, our new CDBG officer will be our former office manager. Mary Masinski took the job, agreed to do it. Lovely. So that's hopefully great. we'll get her paperwork squared away, and um, that'll be that's a great transition. I'm I'm so excited that she was interested in it. So we'll be hiring a new office manager, and then I need a transportation planner if anybody knows one. <laughs> so that's that's all I have for updates. Great, thank you so much. Uh, any other new business from any of the board members? Jean, this is Sorry. this is not new, but it's not recent either. Um, Inspectional Services isn't doing a good job in enforcing the sign bylaw, and I know I spoke to Jenny about that a number of years ago, and she had, I think, at least one conversation with them, and at that time, they were very short-staffed, and the last thing you want them to do is work on signs when there are more important things, but at some point, it would be really helpful if some agreement could be made that at least occasionally 
they would go up and down Mass Ave and do something about signs. If I could just speak to that really briefly, I, I do know that Mike Champa was working very closely with um, Ali Carter before she left, and they had crafted several notices to non-conforming signage owners. Um, so I think that's a great call out, especially with the new economic yeah. development coordinator started to restart yeah. some of those efforts, because I, I do know that he met with, for example, the Arlington Heights action plan implementation, the, the yeah. committee with the longest name. And, um, Had a they, short sign. Yes, was very interested in you know, that being something that, that they were very concerned about. So, yeah, good good call out, and we should make sure that that's passed on to Mike. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Steve? Well, not, not so much new business, but a question. Um, at some time, could we meet the new economic development coordinator and maybe the Chamber of Commerce? Absolutely. Yes, we talked about that. I don't think we could hold him back, to be honest. He's very <laughs> excited <laughs> to get going. And I, I think we had talked about inviting Beth Walk to a future oh, meeting, so that might be, um, I don't know, what, what do we have on our, yeah, maybe on one of the January meetings, it might be too short notice for our meeting in two weeks, but. Uh, Let's plan on January 9th, I'll make a, okay. I'll make a note. Are you back then? I will be back on uh, the 13th. Maybe when she's back. Okay. Maybe the 23rd? Okay, so let's do the 23rd. Yeah. Sure. Just want the full team. <laughs> Great. Anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. A second. Take a vote. Uh, Steve? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And yes as well. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>